Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for the time that has been given, I will be speaking about thinking clearly in time of stress. Hallelujah. Thinking clearly in time of stress. And the truth of the matter is that there are many stressed people here this morning. True or true? There are many people who do not even wish for tomorrow to come because there is drama in your office. Uh, your marriage is falling apart. There comes a time you're so stressed that you just want to sleep and you do not want the day to break, isn't it? And, and, and that is life, but that is not what we are supposed to be living as. So please uh, come with me to the book of Luke chapter number 12 and verse number 25. Luke chapter number 12 and verse number 25. Thinking clearly in time of stress or during stressful moments. So Luke 12, 25. And the Bible says, and which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Please give me 26 as well. If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Please give me John 14, 27. John 14, 27. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Father, in the name of Jesus, anoint my lips to declare your word. If there's anything in me that would hinder your word from getting through to your people, I hide it under your wings, Jehovah God. I command the angels to take over this sanctuary and do that which they are divinely orchestrated to do. Receive all honor and all glory, for it's in Jesus' name we do pray. And everybody says, Amen and Amen. Well, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, and you're talking about how anxious this country is. And, and uh, so I looked up, what is stress? Stress, in many dictionaries and in the, or Google, is a state of mental or emotional strain resulting from adverse or demanding circumstances. Another definition is stress is a physical, mental, or emotional factor that causes bodily or mental tension. Stress can be external from the environment, it's psychological or social situations or even internal. But evidently, when you read the scriptures, God did not bring us to this world to be stressed. He wanted us to have a happy life, the joy of the Lord, to be happy-go-lucky, you know. Everybody comes to church, we are not stressed, but we're just coming here to praise the Lord, isn't it? But the truth of the matter is that we are still living in this world, and there are situations that arise that make you get stressed. And uh, stress being a mental thing, but remember, ladies and gentlemen, stress starting from the mental has far-reaching repercussions in the physical. Hallelujah. Well, some time ago, I was admitted in hospital, and the, my doctor said to me, uh, young man, I like being called young man because of my white hair, <laughs> and, and he said, um, 90, we have a 90% bed occupancy, and of the 90% who are there, the greater majority are below the age of 45. And it's not because of cancer or anything. It is lifestyle diseases. And he said the number one thing of you young men who are here is stress. Stress to live through this life. Stress, stress. And many of you really have come here and this is your last straw. Stress, stress upon stress. Even that's why when somebody says hello, before you say I'm fine, you click. Life is stressful. It's, come, it's become so inculcated in us, even a social thing like how are you, you first have to click because at the back of our mind, there is always something disturbing us. Your wife is stressing you with an AK-47 mouth. Your husband is stressing you. Your children are, are being suspended in school. Your relationships are not working. People are hating on you in, 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 in the office. People are hating on you in church. Stress all around. And if you are stressed, your body starts locking down. But the problem is also the world has given us avenues to kill this stress. But are they right? Absolutely not. Some people decide to deal with stress the worldly way. Maybe overindulging in alcohol. And what you don't realize, alcohol does not eradicate the issue, it just postpones the inevitable. Because you'll only forget that which is stressing you at the time you are high. You understand what I'm saying? And you'll be dancing in the club, you'll be tetemarying, and you'll be doing everything. But when you wake up in the morning, the stress is looking at you. What are you going to do? Some even overindulge in eating. Do you know overeating is a sign of stress? And I have nothing against lawyers, but overeating is a sign of stress. You understand what I'm saying? 
No, for us, it's not overeating, it's a calling. <laughs> so overeating, uh, going beyond what we know you for, you can't sit and eat 11 chapatis and say, Unarudishia mwili asante. It is stress. <laughs> so the world offers us many things. Uh, some people even dangle in immoral behavior to try and run away from the stresses of life. But ladies and gentlemen, we have a God who says in the beginning, God. So nothing gets God by surprise. So he has given us ways and means to deal with that which may come. It may surprise you, but I'm here to tell you without fear of contradiction, ladies and gentlemen, nothing and absolutely nothing gets God by surprise. But then why don't we walk in that grace of dealing with these issues? It's because we have not combed the scriptures to understand the things that the Lord has asked us and has given us to do. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know what you're going through today. And stress is because something is happening. And by the way, stress, as Pastor Mishoka likes saying, exaggerates the issue. You are stressed about something that if it only it came forth, it would not have the same damage that you're worried about. So you're worried. What will people say? You know, even this book of mine, let me tell you, I have revealed some things about myself and I feel that stress is off. Because you had it from me anyway. You know, church gossip can be dangerous. If church gossip was a company to do better than Safaricom in the stock exchange. Now, whatever you are going through, ladies and gentlemen, I know there seems to be no light at the end of the tunnel, but give me Romans 8, 28. The Bible says, and we know that all things work together for, for the good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. Whatever you are going through, the scripture says, all Things. It does not say the good things that you will go through. It does not say when your marriage is in the honeymoon stage. It does not say when your children are getting A's. It says all things. And I understand English very well. All means the good, the bad, and the ugly. Even that stress, all things work to, for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. Ladies and gentlemen, that thing you are going through has not got God by surprise because he will turn that which the devil meant for evil in his own divine plan. And by the time you are getting to that land of milk and honey, you will look back and say, thank you for that which I went through. It wasn't pretty at that time. Hindsight is one of the most beautiful things. But when you're going through that stress, you wonder. And I want you to think with me for a minute. There are some of the things, there are things I have gone through that were very painful. But let me tell you something. When I look back, I would not have it any other way. All things work good. And right now, you may be in that situation. And thinking, ah, what am I going to do? I'm actually just coming to church because I'm avoiding the landlord. So when he calls, you answer the phone, he hears bishop saying, praise the Lord. And he will say, ako kanisa. You may be here because your husband is at home drunk. Ladies and gentlemen, all, look at your neighbor and say all things. You no, know, say to the anointing, all things. And if you don't believe me, even think about Joseph. He went through some stress when he told his brother about the dreams. They concocted plans. By the time he was in the pit, and some of you right now are in the pit season, you are stressed. Because nobody seems to be around you. Joseph was so down that the only place he could look is up where his help comes from. Let me tell you something. If you asked Joseph at that time, he would tell you, please, somebody come and take me back to my father. But the father loved him so much, but God had a plan for Joseph to go to his place of destiny. And he knew if he told his father that, dad, I need to go somewhere, the father loved him so much, he would even get security to make sure he does not leave that jurisdiction. And another thing is that God knew Joseph did not have fare to go to Egypt. So he allowed some things to happen. And he was given a free ride as a slave. But they did not know they were carrying a prime minister. So some of you, the Lord has allowed some things to happen. Not because he's a wicked God. 
He knows if it was up to you, you would not do that which you need to do to get to your land of milk and honey. So some of you must be fired. And I hope some of you will be fired on Monday. Say amen. Be, say amen. Because that job is the devil's good and you're missing out on God's best. So because he knows you will not write that resignation until you get another job. By the way, if you have to resign before, uh, after getting another job, then you're not operating in faith. I have the amens for that point here. So God then allows that. That's why he allowed the brothers. He did not inspire. He allowed for him to be thrown into the pit. And that's a stage now when everybody leaves you, instead of getting stressed, that is the time you want to get closer to God. And tell God in, in, in this, what, what, what do you want me to see? Because everything you go through, the Lord has something for you to see and to learn. And the Lord is the worst examiner. He never tells you when the exam is coming. He never graduates you to the next class until you pass that one. So please, it's in our own interest to learn as quickly as possible. Are we together so far? All things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. So Joseph was in the pit and he was wondering at that time, what is this? I thought, God, you called me. Why do you allow this to happen? Why is everybody, even the closest people to me, planning evil against me? Lord, why are you silent? God is never silent. He is just weaving things behind the scenes. So yes, you who is in that quagmire right now. I want to tell you just like Joseph, the Lord is there. So you think clearly and say all things. And from there, then he thought it can't get any worse and some people come and give a few pennies and is carried to the other country. But God knew. You have been transferred to Mandera? Please go. Stop blaming the devil. All things. And whatever the devil means for evil, he will turn to your own good. Hallelujah. No, hallelujah. So all things. Please think about Joseph. And then it doesn't get worse. It gets worse. He then is thrown to prison. He gets tempted. He's thrown to prison. Imagine with all that happening, people are seeing a slave. People are seeing somebody who tried to sleep with the master's wife. People are seeing somebody who has been disowned by a brother. But God is seeing a prime minister. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you're going through, in the physical, we may be seeing a lady who doesn't seem to get married. We are seeing a man who is taking too long to get married. But it is okay. It is, oh, oh, oh. you are saying this old man is refusing to get married. But what you do not know, there is a lady being furnished, being panel beaten because of me. Can I get an amen? So please, you may see things with your physical. Many may see you as a person who is being fired day in, day out. It's because you don't have the grace to be employed. God has called you as an entrepreneur. So why are you playing in mediocrity? Being employed, employed, being ordered. You have to be at work by 7.59, but you are being fired, not because you're not good at working, but God has another plan for you. By the time you're getting the resignation letter, you feel that everybody has disowned you. You think that eh, the world and the realms have conspired to make you suffer. But God sometimes, I'm sure, laughs at us when you're stressed. He's saying, I, I, if only you knew what I have in store for you, you'd be celebrating right now. So just because the Bible says all things. And he said, I've exalted my word above my own name. Just for that, let's just take God for his word. For he is not a man that he should lie. Talk to a friend of mine who was fired. And the amazing thing, he was giving thanks. Yet he has kids and a wife. Kids, school fees. And he says, no. I'm sure the Lord knows why it happened. Child of God, hang in there. All things. The good, the happy days, the sad days. The stressful days, the days you don't want to wake up, the days you don't feel like lifting your hand to worship the Lord. All those things, by the time the Lord takes you to the fullness of what he has in store for you, and just the fact that he has said, before I knew you, before you were born, I knew you. He, he knew you before you were fired. 
Before you were bathed, I consecrated you. I graced you. So which demon is trying to interfere with the plan of God? What you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, even the devil works for God. Doesn't know. Everything the, Lord, the, the devil tries, God turns it. Can I get an amen? Can I get a louder amen? Now, another thing that you must understand is it won't kill you. It won't kill you. I was in Atlanta last, some December, and something bad had happened here. And the bishop said to me, I remember, I was very stressed before we talked, bishop. I didn't know what to do. Thank God, even before my salvation, I never drank alcohol. Because those are the days you feel like having one for the road. Not one, five. And Bishop says, Robert, ignore. Serve God like nothing has happened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shake it off. Give me Acts 28 and 3. Acts 28. Whatever it is, it won't kill you. Put that in your mind. It won't kill you. Acts 28, please. Acts 28. And verse number 3. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. Go on. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, no, no doubt this man is a murderer, whom though has he, he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow him to leave. Go on. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. It won't kill you. Have you ever done something good? Then out of that something good, you're about to give a testimony and then something bad happens. It stresses you, isn't it? I mean, Paul was in Malta. It was cold. It was raining. And the natives were very good to them, ladies and gentlemen. And they put the fire together so that they get some warmth. There was something good that was about to happen. And instead of thanking God, a viper, very poisonous, ladies and gentlemen. And, and, and remember, when that happened, then the people around started saying, this one. This one is a bad person. In fact, this is a calamity. This is a calamity that is happening. Have you gone through some things that have stressed you? To appoint the people around you. Start saying bad things about you. And Paul did not concentrate on the naysayers. Paul did not concentrate on what they were saying. Because whatever you accept to get into your ear, it becomes life in your life. And Paul knew, if I start listening to these people, I will not concentrate on shaking it off. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, you have been fired. Yes, you are going through issues. Yes, your kids are drunkards. Yes, this is happening. And people around you are saying it's because your grandfather up to four generations back was a witch doctor. Now, if you start concentrating on those words, you will not do that which you have to do. Please lift your strong hand and say, I shake it off. No, the way some of you are shaking, I don't even shake anything. Can you say, I shake it off? Because that stress is like that viper. It engulfs you. Everything about you is stress. When you come to church, do you know there are people who, when Bishop says, say hi to five people, they don't want to come and see you happy. They want to check, is a stress killed you? So somebody would live here and come and say hi. hi. I'm, not saying, I'm not saying everybody who comes far is jealous. So don't say I'm being demonic. But some people will live here and go up to there. Oh, praise the Lord. It's good to see you. No, they just want to check your countenance. Has stress killed you? Just shake it off. By the way, it will not kill you. Think about the stresses you have been through. And you thought you're about to die. Are you still here? So why is this one putting you down? Ladies and gentlemen, it will not kill you. A viper is so venomous. It is poison. If the poison gets into your bloodstream, I'm telling you, your body starts shutting down one by one. But let me tell you, stop amplifying that issue. Because let me tell you, it is also pride to amplify your problems. Some people, we, all we know about them is problems. Everything. Moro Jakula lunch, shida. Why don't you look happy? I'm seeing demons everywhere. I remember I was at Teleposter Towers and I remember vividly a lady tripped herself. 
And he says, the devil is a liar. You are seeing stress everywhere. No, you just wore shoes that don't suit your legs. You can't be seeing stress in everything. Shake it off, people. Stop amplifying. Because God is saying, I have, here the devil is trying to amplify. But here I have come so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Choose one. Life or the box. You know, money or the box. Money or the box. Choose life and have it more abundantly. Because when Christ came to die, he didn't die so that you live a life of perambulating in mediocrity. That English is good. He did not die. All the shame. By the way, even Christ went through stress. So that you do not have to operate in that level. You've got to know you're seated high above. Read the book of Ephesians. So why do you reduce yourself to come and play small, small? He said it is finished. He went and made the public spectacle on the enemy. Took and rendered him weaponless. Please. I'm very passionate about this because I've been through things that have made me feel my life is over. And if you read my book, I have tried committing suicide three times. Did I want to commit suicide because people are saying you're the best? No, I amplified the problems. And sometimes stress is not somebody looking like this. Stress is you, lady, with your nice manicure, with your Brazilian weave, whether it's synthetic that you have to hit like this, fine, that is stress. Stress is a man in a good suit and good shoes and smelling good. But the battle is in the mind. What do you allow to be amplified in your mind? You go to think about the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. If he delivered you from the lion and the bear, what is this stress that is the Goliath? He will surely deliver that stress into your hands. Because he has been proved faithful. Fool, I who began a good work is faithful enough to complete it. I am the Alpha and Omega. I started it, I will finish it. Yes, there is stress in between, but because I started it, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the Lion of the tribe of Judah, so these small cheaters should not disturb you. Walk with apostolic audacity. Hallelujah. <laughs> Tell the devil you got nothing on me. Because he said it is finished, he never said I am finished. He is there for us. Plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. No, hallelujah. I want to tell you nobody should leave this place stressed. Nobody. Say nobody. Should leave this place stressed. It's an embarrassment to the blood of Jesus. I have come so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Peace and joy that surpasses all human understanding. When they come to you hoping that you're about to be broken down by the stress of life. I wanted to use another word Bishop uses, but I'll know I will not pronounce it well. It starts with V, but it is okay. When oh, the stresses of life have put you down. It's okay, thank you. I will not repeat it, but it's fine. <laughs> I'll practice for the next time. So you go to, give you something, that one. For, for what you go to understand when everybody comes and they start saying, this one is not getting married because I think the father was a witch doctor. This one has been sleeping around. It is okay. Shake it. Don't amplify the issue, please. Paul did what he had to do. Let me tell you, stress will not kill you. Hallelujah. Shake it off. So, and these things you can only do when you're in the right frame of mind. Hallelujah. When you're in the right frame of mind. Let me tell you, if your mind is not in the right frame, your body will not move. Have you been to a situation whereby you haven't left the house for days? Not because your body physically has a problem, but because here, things are not Okay. I remember in 2013, I went through an issue. I didn't leave my house almost three months. I went to my barber. He didn't recognize me. Because my beard was all over the place. But my feet were working. I could leave if I wanted to. But there was so much in my mind that my body could not move. You have come from the school of ministry. How do you think you will serve God if your mind is not in the right place? 
How do you think you'll go out there and become a kingdom representative in the business arena, in the media, in sports, arts, and culture, in all the seven mountains? How will you be a kingdom representative if your mind is not right? Say it one more time. Shake it off. Another thing is not what to say. Give me 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter number 4 and verse number 16. 2 Kings. Hallelujah. 2 Kings 4 and 16. And then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, no, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maid servant. Go on. We'll go up to three. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come of which Elisha had told us, had told her. And the child grew. Now it happened one day that he went out to his, out to his father, to the reapers, go on. And he said to his father, my head, my head. So he said to a servant, carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. Go on. And she went out, she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. Go on, we're going to 23. Then she called to her husband and said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. Now 23. So he said, why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, it is well. This is, and the Jews used to Mourn like lawyers. Do you know how lawyers mourn? You are in Kisumu. You are going to Busia. They prepare the advance party. When they see the lights, a woman lets out a shriek that alerts the enemies and their friends alike that the body has arrived because of what has happened. This lady had just lost her son. That is a stressful moment. And in fact, most ladies, if you lose your child, who will be the first person you run to? Your husband. But she said to the man, it is well. Please look at your neighbor and touch their hand and squeeze it and tell them it is well. If you're sitting next to somebody's wife, release that hand very quickly. <laughs> The Shunammite woman. Instead of concentrating on the issue that would bring so much stress, she just said, it is well. It is well. Whatever it is, say to the righteous what? It is well. Don't concentrate on that issue. And when she went, the, the prophet saw so her, told Gehazi, that woman is distressed, but the Lord has hidden it away from me. And she still told Gehazi, it is. When she got to the man of God, she did not say, my son is dead. She says, didn't you promise me a son? Didn't, didn't you lie to your maid servant? Don't concentrate on the issue. Please just say, it is well. Have you lost your job? It is well. You have, that man has left you? It. That woman has left you? It may seem dark at that point, but let me tell you, speak the right things. It is is, I'm telling you, you can only say that if you have the right presence of mind. That you have been dumped to make it worse on WhatsApp. And you still have the presence of mind to say, it is. I'm telling you today, it is well. Whatever it is, it is well. This lady had the presence of mind to not even talk about death. Because Proverbs 6-2 said, you have been ensnared by the words of your own mouth. You have been taken up by your own ones. It is well. What are you saying? What are you concentrating on? Just say to yourself and to somebody, it is. Hallelujah. Let's have the Shunammite woman spirit of saying, it is well. I don't think there's any more difficult thing than a mother losing a child. Yet she was still clear in her thoughts to say, it is what? It is well. Wow, as I'm finishing, oh my goodness. Give me Psalms 43 and 5. Psalms 43 and 5. Psalms 43 and verse number 5. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? 
Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him. The help of my countenance, my God. And then give me Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs 17, 22. Proverbs 17, 22. Hallelujah. I know you're going through stress. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bone. Ladies and gentlemen, there comes a time you have to let the joy of the Lord. You have just been fired. You have gone through an issue. But let me tell you something. Uh, you're just having the joy of the Lord. There is a spring in your step. Everybody knows that whatever you've been through should stress you. But let me tell you, tell that stress the joy of the Lord. Let everybody wonder, is this person mad or in drugs? Is there witchcraft? Tell them, no, it is Godcraft. The joy of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, today I know you have come here in tears. Yeah, tears that we cannot see, but on the inside, there is a lot happening. But the joy of the Lord. If you have to dance, let me tell you, let's dance like our life depends on it. If you have to dance until your weave falls off, just dance. If you have to dance until your shoes fall off, just dance dance if you have to kick out your shoes and then dance for the Lord because people don't know that it's by the grace of God that you can still stand up and come to church whatever is stressing you just have the joy of the Lord because if you stress yourself your bones will dry and if your bones will dry you will start dying physically and by the way we will bury you and forget you can I tell you something painful about death only your immediate family remembers you for two years. After two years, they remember you and they don't. They remember you and they don't. Why do you want to die for stress? You die, you leave your wife for who? In fact, the man who is consoling your wife, it is well with your soul, is the one who is just eyeing. Don't allow. Don't die for anybody. Kuja Kadisa. The way Bishop was dancing that song in Kiluya. He was even going in reverse. You are reversing all your problems. And then you come back to the joy of the Lord. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Let the joy of the Lord be your portion. And that will make you avoid people who have a mumu spirit. They don't like talking about good things. Hang around people who speak of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Not people just saying things to bring a gloomy face. Have you been around people? Let me tell you, there are some people, when they come, you call by mistake. You just, you are running away. There is no phone, but you answer a phone. But you make sure it's on silent. You answer a phone and you start going because they just don't have the joy of the Lord. We were having tea with Pastor Peter Kul, Pastor Msiok, Moneki, and Morris, the other, the other day. And I left that place feeling good because the things we were discussing is just the goodness of the Lord, how far the Lord has brought us. So all of a sudden, when you start discussing about the goodness of the Lord, the stresses of life go down. Hallelujah. May you have the joy of the Lord. May you have the joy of the Lord. Do you know, let me tell you, Jesus did not die. For nothing. And then after all has been said and done. You must have the presence of mind. Not to look back. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. The things that almost killed you. Don't dwell on them. But let them be a point of learning. Casting down arguments. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, the honors of bringing that to sub subjection onto the obedience, let me tell you, is your new. You can't be saying stress, kill us, stress. You are driving stress, stress, stress. Whatever that tries to rear its ugly head above that which God wants you to have. Oh, you're about to die. 
Hey, you're about to die. But the scripture says, I will not die, but live long to declare the good works of the Lord in the land of the living. Oh, you're being told, and that's why you're stressed. The weapons are coming real hard. But you say, oh, oh, oh Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Oh, people are gossiping you. Tell them, let me go to part B of that scripture. And every tongue that rises against me, I rebuke. Every time you speak the scripture, Heaven has no otherwise but to back you. So it's not about the English. Some of you come with very big English to scare the devil. Devil, stop perambulating here. I come with a sword and I return you back to sender. He will say, which sender? Then there's a woman in a corner who does not know English but prays in Kikuyu and says in Kikuyu, I don't, I'm going to say it in Kikuyu, it is written. The moment you start speaking scripture, the fullness of God, the healing of your mind, which automatically brings the healing of your body, and the joy of the Lord becomes your portion. And everything that tries to come around you to bring you down in stress disappears. Ladies and gentlemen, as you leave today, please understand that stress is not of God. Stress is because you are thinking about circumstances. That's why you're here in boardrooms. According to the circumstances, I don't think we'll be able to do this. In the things of God, we don't look at circumstances. But what does the word of God say? And it may not make logical sense in the physical. But let me tell you something. As long as he said it, if God says, this is purple, it is purple. By the way, it is what? Because he said it. If God says, <laughs> Arbi, you're married. It's because he's speaking in the future. And you'll all be invited. Say amen. amen. Say amen. You know, a lawyer wedding, you must eat until you sit down. <laughs> we eat to get tired. Mazeni me choka. So please. And then, the final thing is, pray for one another. There is nothing as good as a believer praying for another. The biggest lie believers make, I am praying for you. Out of ten who tell you that, two are really praying. But today, as House of Grace, where we do church as a team, we will pray for one another. Because you don't know what each and every one of us is dealing with. There is a woman coming here and leading worship and dancing, but the children are sick. There is a woman coming here, she has just been told she's stage 4 cancer. There is a man coming here, does not know where the next meal is going to come from. He has to go to Uhuru Park and sit and lie to the wife that has been looking for a job. Please, you don't know what people are going through. I love you, you love me. I pray for you, you pray for me. I will not hurt you with the words of my mouth because we are part of one family. Today, you do not know what somebody is dealing with. Yes, he may look like he's a good suit and a good dress. But even the weave, he's saying hallelujah. But inside, they're dying. Inside, they're telling the Lord, if you don't come through for me, this stress will kill me. By the way, half of the people have committed suicide is stress. Stress that leads to depression. Depression that leads to hearing the wrong voices and then acting on the wrong voices. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand we are going through issues. And honestly, if we say we do church as a team, they shall know you are my disciples because you love one another. The Lord bless you.